Uh-huh. Yes, uh, Ward, can you uh, um, briefly uh, explain what does the four, the last four cover? The last, the next yeah. four, what does it cover for us? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have four more lectures. And the next one is kind of a companion piece to this one that we just read. Uh, this one we just read was on the planes and their correlations with parts of the human body. And the next one we'll talk about these seven skies, uh, the Asmans, and their co- corresponding correlations with parts of the human body. Baba, throughout these two lectures, has been building towards an analogy. He says the whole point of it is to provide the foundation for an analogy. So that will come, and here's an image uh, of that analogy that uh, Nadia drew. And then the last three turn to a totally different topic, which is the descent of Pran from the seventh plane down to the uh, uh, gross plane. It's a very very strange ending, and then the series concludes. So that's what we've got coming. Not so bad. Uh, it may be uh, it, it may be late to say that, but as you're explaining word, it makes sense uh, that we cover at least w- one more since the last three taps into different, as you mentioned, uh, you know something different because my question is actually also relates to this corresponding, uh, correspondent between the planes and human body or human part, different part of human form. So I don't know, it's your call and everybody else's call, but I just. Well, uh, we did read this one. No, I mean, uh, he is mentioning figure 38, probably, you know, continuing oh, the, yeah. the next lecture or something. Yeah. I don't know. Well, for me, I would like to study this a little bit before we cover that on Sunday. Okay. That might be helpful to absorb it a little more because it was a little bit, uh, it's tricky, Ward. <laughs> you know, there are so many uh, unknowns about that, but uh, I think you do, this, guys did a good job. This particular one is the most, uh, the term they always use is corrupt, means that there are all these missing mm-hmm. words. Uh, and it, it it was really terrible, and they, mm. it's very hard to resolve some of them. This came up earlier when Baba was uh, talking about, um, you know, evolution. There are some problems, and a lot of these come up where he probably was pointing to parts of his own body, and they probably didn't note it down properly. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so my next question. Time, Dave, mm. he covered these. Uh, seven states of knowing as he calls it um and uh seven eight kinds of bliss by the way you know there's been um with john stevens group and many others uh there's been you know a lot of interest in uh cultivating intuition so this chart here this table here uh, gives um a perspective on that that could be very useful that is to say, when you enter into the planes, uh, there are, he calls it your mode of knowing. It looks like this is the English word corresponding to what he called Chaitanya, an infinite intelligence. And he used that term a little bit here too. So thus you have inspiration, revelation, insight, intuition, illumination and ecstasy, divine sight, and realization. So this is very uh, useful information for studying planes. And as you saw, he gave uh, descriptions of what all of these are, uh, you know, what uh, these states are. He said, he makes it clear that inspiration the inspiration of the first plane is something, uh, yeah, like he says here, um, the inspiration that philosophers and poets and great thinkers get. 
has absolutely no connection with this higher inspiration. So it, it goes way beyond what uh, or gross conscious people get as inspiration. Elizabeth, yeah. I have a couple of small questions. So um, related to that, does that, is the, those forms of bliss, do you have to be on that on the fourth plane to have the intuition or the, you know, do you have to be situated on, on those planes before you can even, even have that mode of knowing, or yeah. can you have that mode of knowing if you're, you know, on a gross plane, but you might have something just hit you. Like, you know, we often say, um, I had an intuition about X, Y, Z, mm. you know, but most people in the gross world are not on the fourth plane. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Baba doesn't here address that question. Um, I mean, it would seem that even we gross planers uh, do get intuitions and those have value. Um, I think the intuition you get on the fourth plane is something. Uh, way beyond that. Elsewhere, he has said on the fourth plane, your intuitions are always true. Uh, There's no problem of having mistaken intuitions. So probably in the gross plane, you can unconsciously access um, some of that capacity, but you get the real thing when you're on the planes. That's my uh -huh. guess. So I had two other quick questions one is when they say thumb toe i'm presuming they're meaning big toe right yeah and then um i was wondering are there you said there were problems with the um in the charts knowing uh the the ana the anatomical charts so yeah. you said there were some gaps some lacuna um are there, is, would there be a possibility of filling those in? I mean, are there any other manuscripts that might become available um, that that haven't been found, um, that you think might exist where someone else might well, have taken notes? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, nothing has shown up so far. I mean, I spent a huge amount of time on this, um, mm -hmm. but we don't have the primary diaries, unfortunately. Uh, uh -huh. And nothing we have resolves the, resolves these problems. Mm -hmm. Mary Maybe said something the, will turn up. It's it's the prospects are not that great. Yeah, Mary said the the secret book. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking that too. Yeah. <laughs> Who has the book? Mary does. Mary does. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but she's not going to tell us. Well, well, let's let's find out. Go ahead, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Any hints? I can I can ask my question now. Yes, you can ask your question. <laughs> <That's> so funny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, if you saw my office <laughs> and all the paper, <laughs> what I can't find. Okay. All right. I feel like this is an incredibly stupid question. I I go back and forth with thinking I'm understanding one thing and thinking no, it's this other instead. Are these strictly analogies with parts of the body or? Is it that these uh, states of consciousness, et cetera, whatever, are stored or located in these parts of the body? Yeah. Well, Baba hasn't explained it. Um, elsewhere, he's brought up topics like this. There's a branch of, uh, I don't know, um, study or uh, a topic in scholarship called um, a subtle physiology, Chris. Um, Chris. which, uh, Chris. like, and you find it in various traditions around the world. Yoga, uh, it's there. In certain Taoist texts, oh, also. Sorry, uh, which posit correlations the whole thing around her <laughs> between the human form and uh, certain subtle significances. Um, so. Uh, I would guess that uh oh <laughs> you muted the wrong person. Uh 
something in future decades and centuries that Baba researchers are really going to go into, I am sure. Mm -hmm. okay. Baba is, as I say, not the only one to have broached this topic. You'll find there are certain currents, spiritual traditions, where they uh, uh, approach the human form in the same way. Wait, I've done body work and energy work, and um, yeah, there are some, but the extent to which um, Baba has done this with the toes and everything, and uh, even the right. hollows, the hollows are the most fascinating. I, I just didn't know if I were missing it, and it's being stated clearly, and I'm just missing it, that it was um, an exact correlation, or I mean, actually, that these things are stored in those points. So would be interesting or maybe we'll find the the book in in our lifetime yeah. those of us who are in our late 70s keep um, looking, keep looking. <laughs> yeah yeah my my apologies for over talking there i thought i was muted chris and i are getting the, uh, a little the biggest uh, gap the biggest <laughs> textual problem is relates to the third plane uh when we read that read it, you may have noticed it said the third plane follows. <laughs> I put that in because it says the third plane is blank. And um, but but in the diagram, we made the guess that it's the hip. Because uh, what the principle here seems to be joints or junctures in the skeletal frame, uh, thus the ankle, the knee and the shoulder so the hip seems like would be the natural one and um i spent about two hours on the phone i don't know if any of you know bob aarons do you know bob aarons mm -hmm. he's a doctor and we were going over the human anatomy and i was trying to get an idea so uh you know what bone would be here but somewhere like the adam's apple and um we haven't done the uh, hollows yet that'll be the next lecture Okay, my turn. Mm. Can you go to the next page, 278? Mm. Uh, yeah. These bliss states. Um, yeah. This this is pretty pretty new stuff, isn't it? Yeah, I, it is. Nothing about this anywhere else that I recall. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's right. It's it's pretty. I mean, look at this, all yeah. of them. The content he was giving to these kids. I know My it's God. amazing. Just one thing after another. And he keeps reminding them to stay alert to certain things. Yeah. So yeah. he's really up to something here. Um, this the one where it says uh, Chintananda. Is that it? Yeah. The bliss of reflection is experienced only by human beings. I find that very intriguing. <laughs> um, it was really a puzzle yeah. because all you see, uh, the bliss of reflection, that's just a translation. Mm -hmm. And uh, God alone knows, I mean, maybe if we even got it right. So Chintan means thought, reflection, meditation. It is hard to know exactly what Baba meant by this phrase. Since then, his other writing, he never mentions it. And then it goes on to say, um, yogis experience the yoganand. Yeah. And it is proper to those who have cheesed the human form, but who have not yet been turned. I, right. thought, I thought being turned meant you were on the planes. Yeah. And, it's, and in the next one also says... Mm -hmm. Uh, you with a premanand, and it, it sounds like um, Baba is referring to what some of the boys have been experiencing. Mm. The fortunate one who acquires this kind of anand wins the chance of turning. That there's the note said, which um, we read out. This would seem to imply that these three thought kinds of bliss uh, are experienced before you enter the spiritual path. But that's a little bit hard to believe. Yeah. So um, I'm not sure about that. Because the next one, the uh, Atmanand, already were up on the fifth plane. Hmm. So you have to remember these are notes taken down in these talks, and they may not have, they may have been garbled or written clearly or 
they may not have gotten the gist of what Baba was saying. There's always, and that seems to have happened here. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mahu. Yes. Can can we go word? Can can we go to that uh, right of about uh, figure thirty seven, please? The one that Elizabeth to, read and she read it fast. <laughs> to what? I can't quite hear. The, the, the write up on figure 37. You know that figure 37 and the next page next to it? Uh huh. Key yeah. to figure 37. Yeah. Can you please enlarge it? Yeah, uh, this is enlarged. This yeah, is great. Figure, yes. Yeah, I, I could just see, I can see it now. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I. I was actually, uh, I was curious to know that why there is a two human figure illustration here. I know that yeah. the one on the right hand side, uh, like you said, the, the hollow part points to the sky. And the one yeah. on- Yeah, well, remember that yeah. this is, figure of the original and we just put this in because we thought it would be helpful to readers and as to the whole hollow issue that will be brought up in the next lecture baba explains that that the asmans are hollows corresponding to the planes remember hollow how it came up early on mm -hmm. uh, with can uh, can you uh, can you briefly uh, cover it? I miss a few lectures. What was it that it came uh, early on? What did Baba say about hollow? Um, he brought that up with uh, pran. It corresponds to fullness and akash or hoko to hollow. Oh yes, yes, I remember all of that. Yes, that yes, was a big thank topic. you. Yes. So it does kind of invite our supposing that there's some kind of a relationship of that sort between the planes and the uh, skies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And then the next one, you know, in explanation of the fifth plane, Bobo mentioned about uh, this chap on fifth plane that he sees God as Atma within not as universe without. Um, and this is the part that Bobo was explaining that he hasn't reached the oneness yet. He's not merged with God. Uh, I, I couldn't, uh-huh, go ahead. Yeah, so I couldn't really understand. Uh, I understand where he sees God within himself, but I didn't understand that how how is it that he doesn't see God in universe? Well, you know what I mean? You're actually talking about the fifth plane. I think you did. It, you had it, yeah. You had it, yeah. yeah. And then okay. later on, Baba explained here he sees himself as a seer. Very beautiful, Baba says here. Seer, not as seen. So seeing yeah, probably corresponds to God. You. I'm listening on the phone and it's not very clear. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. Why am I not remembering exactly where? You had it there early on. Did I have it there? Yeah. Yeah. Fifth, yeah. Mahu, are you talking about the sixth plane or the fifth plane? Uh, hold on, let's... Yeah, let's here he says it. he's going to get to the fifth and sixth planes. I don't yeah, know. perhaps it's six because yeah, here we go. It's almost the there. Anon that we were speaking about yeah, earlier yeah. is the real Anon. The Arif, remember, that's the term he's been giving for someone on the first plane. Also, he's used the term Wali, but here he's using the term Arif. He has arrived in the fifth plane. He who experiences with Atmanan. Ward, we can't hear you. Yeah. You can't hear me? Yeah, can you can speak you right into me? your speaker there? Okay, okay. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, that's better. Um, is continuously wrote and absorbed in, in the light of God, God and experiences the anon as ecstasy. And isn't this interesting? His eyes generally droop 
half open and half closed. And for the most part, he remains naked. Remember in the fourth plane, uh, he has said in the copyright today, the fourth plane is, if you look physically at something, it is closed. That's the eyes are always looking. Ward, I think this was in sixth plane, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, He's but see at the bottom, of, right here seen. at the bottom of the page, excuse me, I'm sorry. See where okay. it starts with Sri Upasni at the very last phrase there? The very last yes. two words, and then go to that next page. That's it. Sri uh -huh. Maharaj 2 remains almost in a state of darkness. Oh, word, we're losing your sound here. Actually, it's here on six. Make it actually. Yeah, bold. that's it. Yeah. On bold. Yeah, put, put your phone in your other hand, word, if you can do that. Now talk. How's this? That's can better. Yeah, I think you were covering your microphone. Covering me. Day of problematic yeah. microphones. <laughs> poor poor yeah. words. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so here on the sixth plane, the adept pilgrim experience. Is this the one you're talking about, Mom? Yeah, it looks like it. Yes, yeah. it's the sixth yeah. plane, Cassandra. So it says, Puchab is not. Yeah, saying. he says that the sixth plane is that it always looks like he's looking at you. Everybody mm -hmm. has that impression. One person mm -hmm. thinks he is looking at me. Another thinks he is looking at him. A third thinks this too, and so on. All believe that the eyes of the sixth planer are turned on them. Mm -hmm. And he says, yeah, there are some sadhus, but only a few who are like this. He's giving these interesting characteristics. He said earlier that on the second plane, the eyes are red mm -hmm. to mark in the second plane. Yeah, these things he hasn't said before, totally new, very interesting, yeah. Yeah, he's giving a lot oh, yeah. of stuff here. <laughs> yeah. I thought somewhere though he said, you know, the red about the red eyes and the bulging eyes, that only the perfect masters can see that. It's not like ordinary pe beings can see their red eyes. Did I get that wrong? Did I lose you? Yeah, no, I can't hear you at all, Ward. Yeah, we lost. There you go. Yeah. So when you okay. use the other hand, I think it covers your mic. Yeah, I am not good at using the mouse with my left hand, but maybe I'll have to do it. Yeah, so here he says, um, the second plane chap, uh, his eyes are found to be red like blood. Mm -hmm. This is the sign by which such a one can be recognized. Mm. Wow. And then on the third, when he says, all this I know, and so I tell you. Yeah. Yeah, and the third plane, he says, the uh, his eyes are swollen. The eyes of others are not always swollen like his are. Mm. I guess that's my eyes. <laughs> so I guess you're, I guess you're in the second plane. plane problem. <laughs> yeah, mine are pretty much red, so uh, <laughs> but that's different <laughs> cause. Your second plane. Different huh? cause entirely. If you start staring at things and they start exploding, <laughs> it means you're on the fourth plane. <laughs> I wouldn't mess around with it. <laughs> Any other questions, folks? Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, I can oh, ask. I oh. can see Karen. Yeah. Can Sorry. I go? Yeah. Uh, I I um I just keep thinking when you have the um when you have the joints and then you have this the the um so, the hollows um yeah. that maybe does it relate also to the folds and does that relate back to those well, that just blows me away. I can't think back to the beginning charts where we had those folds, but it seems like a fold, you know, something's... A something. fall, are you saying? Fold. Folds. F-O-L-D. F-O-L-D. Yeah. The two of them together Fold. is like a fold. Yeah. 
is there anything I'm not, to that? I'm not quite catching the word. Are you referring uh -huh. to the to the F O L D is the word F O L D. Mm -hmm. But we didn't really have folds in this book. It does come up in God Speaks. Karen, you know, are, Karen are you talking about the doll? No, I'm huh? nope. I'm talking about um the uh, the what was it the octopus um chart the yeah. or the um that one with the um oh I don't know how to even describe it <laughs> it's you know with the worlds and and then there were like all these different folds it came out of uh, the hemisphere had those spider things or or oh yeah the, the, octopus he things those, and, he didn't call those folds though did he he didn't he no you mean planets the ranges of planets that, yeah 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 the ranges, just, that's what it is yeah and then uh, yeah hmm. i'm just wondering if this relates at all to folds in any other place like like this one you mean uh-huh yeah, yeah weren't you saying that those I were i don't exactly see the relation these are the seven ranges of planets mm. um, he did call those waves he used that term these are seven waves at one point okay and he hasn't been using that language here but it might i mean all of these i mean we are in a new talk we're talking about the spiritual ascent now mm. and earlier on we were talking about evolution and cosmology and there may be some systematic correlations, could be. Yeah. Well, I guess a wave, you know, is like a yeah. fold, right? Yeah. With the and it's all about pran and akash anyway. So yeah, just wait 700 years and he'll tell us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. We need to find somebody who's on the planes who can, you know, fill in the lacuni. Yeah. <laughs> the other the other comment I wanted to make was that. Um, about the blisses with the animals, humans, and yogis that made perfect yeah. sense to me that um, I, I know that you had several choices of translation of what the, yeah. the word meant, but reflection is how we learn, right? Is when we reflect upon uh, um, yeah. the material and integrate it into what we know and then, you know, yeah. um, I, I, it go on and dream and hypothesize and all that so it yeah. seems like that that's learning and that is certainly i think the bliss of being a human you know that we keep uh -huh. on learning learning yeah yeah it could be i mean it could be like the the process of using thinking in the mind and intellect mm -hmm. yeah and that that makes that's a lot like of sense to me in those sense. yeah would be it's a real problem. I mean, the word just have one word written in the Gujarati script, you know. Huh. So it's the text could be corrupt. There are a lot of those problems coming up at this stage, unfortunately. That's the biggest puzzle of the seven. Hmm. Well, anything else, Karen? Yeah, that's good. Okay, Elizabeth. Yeah, I, I actually, there were two points I wanted to make. One, uh, the premonond. Um, yeah. You know, when you started, yeah, the very next paragraph, the premonond, the, the, the bliss of love. Um, I mean, he, it, throughout the, the lectures, he was telling these boys, um, um, seek prim, seek love, make prim. Right. And that... Uh, because, and then he gives the reason, because if you do that, if you have this bliss of love, you stand the chance of being turned. So it's like a, yeah. a way to get to the turning to God realization through this bliss of love. Uh, at least yeah. that, that really hit me uh, as why he was saying that, why that was so important. The other thing is what Mahu was saying, um, in the paragraph on the sixth plane, if we can go back to that, and she was trying to get the comment on the seer and the scene, and I don't think it means seer like the 
the wise one, yeah. but one who sees. And what that sounds like to me is on the sixth plane, God is still outside of you. God is still objectified. God has not become, um, you have not become one with God. So you don't see God inside as well as outside. That's what I got yeah. out of that. But I think that's what Mahu yeah, was asking. Yeah, it does sound like that, yeah. But where is that? Is, you had it before. I, guess here, I think that this chap on the sixth plane is almost God, so he is almost free yet a deep valley divides the sixth plane from the seventh. So yeah, I have been saying that even if through his own efforts, one somehow reached the sixth plane and such cases are rare indeed, still he can't take this final step from the sixth plane to the seventh, et cetera. Yeah, but if you go to the beginning of that paragraph, that's the one I'm talking about. Yeah. So it's before the, go the ghost, um no, no back where you were right there yeah. see it where it says not yet one with god yeah. there that's in rather he finds Wherever himself as the seer and god is the seen yeah is that what you're talking yeah. about yeah that's exactly yeah. what i'm talking about. in short whenever he turns his gaze he sees god but the poor chap is not yet one with god rather he finds himself as the seer meaning he's one person and god is the seeing god is still the objective I mean, it's, so it's okay. like um, object, you know, subject object still, yeah. still dual, not unitary. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's been, Baba has always characterized the six planes that way. Earlier on, he used the term shat, shatkar uh, in that um, chart that he had about the, uh, Mm -hmm. well it that's also explained at the end of god speaks the um when they're talking about takiyat i think it is there are like 10 pages on it mm -hmm. yeah. no terricot is it terricot yeah terricot oh. um no tawhid i'm sorry tawhid. yeah you're talking about tawhid yeah tawhid the unitary state yes. of god and all the different stages and who is where and anyway well, unless anybody has any other questions, I think Ward and I have suffered enough tonight with all these, <laughs> all of these gyrations. <laughs> you know, I'm having to let him speak through my speaker, so it's really bizarre. What a, what a jury rig system we had. Yeah, it's it's tough. Yeah. Do you think you'll be able to get a better system for yeah, Sunday? Yeah, I'll fix. I'm gonna see him tomorrow. I'll fix it then. Uh huh. Thank okay. you for working so hard at this. Yeah. <laughs> this was yeah. Baba must yeah. have been rolling on the floor laughing at us. That's all I can imagine. <laughs> no doubt. I think you guys did a great job. I mean, it was yeah. difficult hearing. I'm sorry, what did you say, Ward? This is Baba's welcome to Asheville. Yeah. For you. <laughs> right. <laughs> It'll teach me. <laughs> Oh, it's Chris. I can blame it on Chris. That's welcome to the Barker's house. That's welcome to the Barker's house. Okay. All right, That's everybody. Great. Well, thank, thank you. you all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. One more session. Towards the end. Yeah, I think we're going to make it. Make it and, and we have charts coming, as a, and you were saying. Yeah, I, you know, I'm on the road now. It's, oh. it's really... Yeah. yeah, yeah, but I, yeah. I think I will get them together tomorrow. And yes, the yeah. the end is the end is the new beginning. The end is the new beginning. Yeah, very yeah. good. All right, thanks everybody. Thank you. 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 Diana got it. Uh, 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 uh,